I want to address this old and totally false argument for gun control. The Second Amendment militia is the National Guard. First off, before I delve, really delve into it, if the Second Amendment militia were the National Guard, they would not be allowed to be federalized. And I served in the Army and the National Guard. The Founding Fathers made it clear that the militia was composed of the populace at large. Both the Congress and Supreme Court have affirmed this definition of the militia. Let's first talk about the Founding Fathers. George Mason, I ask, who are the militia? They consist now of the whole people, except for a few public officers. The Virginia Constitution, Article 1, Section 13, written in 1776, that a well-regulated militia composed of the body of the people, trained to arms, is the proper, natural, and safe defense of a free state. That standing armies in time of peace should be avoided as dangerous to liberty. Richard Henry Lee. To preserve liberty, it is essential that the whole body of the people always possess arms and be taught alike, especially when young, how to use them. The mind that aims at a select militia, like the National Guard, must be influenced by a truly anti-Republican principle. Next, let's discuss the U.S. Congress. The Militia Act of 1792, one year after the Second Amendment was added to the Constitution, Congress passed a law defining the militia. The Militia Act of 1792 declared that all free male citizens between the ages of 18 and 44 were to be members of the militia. Furthermore, every citizen was to be armed the act stated, every citizen shall provide himself with a good musket or flintlock, a sufficient bayonet and belt, two spare flints. The Militia Act of 1792 made no provision for any type of select militia such as the National Guard. U.S. Senate Subcommittee Report 1982. In the Militia Act of 1792, the Second Congress defined militia of the United States to include almost every free adult male in the United States. These persons were obligated by law to possess a military-style firearm and a minimum supply of ammunition and military equipment. There can be little doubt after this that when Congress and the people spoke of the militia, they had reference to the traditional concept of the entire populace capable of bearing arms, and not to any formal group such as what is today called the National Guard. Current Federal Law the militia of the United States consists of all able-bodied males at least 17 years of age and as ex except as provided in section 313 of title 32 under 45 years of age who are or who have made a declaration of intention to become citizens of the United States who are members of the National Guard. The classes of the militia are the organized militia which consists of the National Guard and the naval militia and the unorganized militia which consists of the members of the militia who are not members of the National Guard or the Naval Militia. That would mean all of you. The Supreme Court, U.S. v. Miller, 1939. In this case, the court stated that the militia comprised all males physically capable of acting in concert for the common defense, and that, when called for service, these men were expected to appear bearing arms supplied by themselves and of the kind in common use at the time. So to break all this down into a simple statement that even a rabid leftist can understand, you're all part of the unorganized militia.